Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to show you how to make this exact scene. We'll be taking a look at a couple of universal techniques which will allow you to make architectural exteriors such as this one, for example. Now, in this case, we'll be using Blender. We'll be talking about some lighting, some set dressing, some vegetation. And this is targeted towards beginners, so I will be going slightly slower than usual. Now, as always, I will be linking down below all of the necessary assets. Now this model that we'll be using here is coming from the 3D warehouse. I will link it down below as well. Download it as a SketchUp file or as a Collada file and import it into Blender. I have already set up all of the materials which are really simple so I will just give you a quick overview. I am using some wood which can be found from Blender Kit. Just by typing wood or veneer you will get a couple of options which can work. You know, experiment with this maybe. Try to switch up the wood material for a different material. The same thing goes for the pavement. I have used a concrete material from Blender Kit. You don't have to be using Blender Kit, you could very well be using any additional asset that you have access to. In this case, I'm using this people concrete bag, which you can find some free samples of on their website. Or download something from Ambient CG or Polyhaven. Same thing goes for the glass. The glass is a default material using a principal PSDF glass shader with transmission and no roughness, as well as a volume absorption with a tint of bluish color. Same thing also goes for the uh, door garage material. I am using a Musgrave texture with inputted into a color wrap and input it as well into the roughness to have some more details and reflections. We are using cycles for this one. Make sure to be using the GPU if you have that and have your DNOs on. This is optional as well. Now what I'd like to do is add our camera very early on which is what I am doing at this point. So make sure to zero out the rotation of the camera and set the x-axis to 90. For the focal length, I am using a focal length of 22, which is very wide, but you will understand in a minute why I am doing that. Now center your object, make sure that the height makes sense of your camera. So roughly at eye level, around 1.5, 1.7 meters, is a good point to work with. For the lighting, we are going to be using a sky texture, which we will improve in a minute and also at the end of the video as well. Play around with the sun rotation until we get a relatively interesting layout and shadows and highlights as well, which will be emphasized once we add our vegetation and trees. For the altitude, I want to have 2,000 meters in order to get a slightly more deep bluish color, which will be obvious in the shadow areas. Now, as you can see, I am shifting the camera on the y-axis to get a nice composition. Now, at this point, let's start by adding some grass using the GeoScatter add-on. I will be using the biomes from the grass blade, which is grass golf under the clean grass category go ahead and add that and before that make sure to set your scale right by pressing ctrl a and choosing scale otherwise your program will crash since sketchup tends to ruin the, the scaling of the mesh into blender now try to optimize the scene a bit more you know have some visibility proxies on and have a couple of adjustments if you really want to. Now for the grass, I want it to be less saturated, which is what I'm going to our instant collection in the GeoScatter collection and play around with the saturation and the value as well. You could go ahead and play around with a hue or you could, you know, all around just swipe it up, change the grass all in itself if you prefer to do that. Now, as you can see, I am just adjusting the pavements again. I could go ahead and improve this 
by doing a weight proximity in the culling masks but in this case you know it seems fine to begin with now as you could see we are starting to have some more development so let's go ahead and add some more environment which is why I'm going to start adding some shrubs and bushes from the botanic add-on feel free to google that and I will be linking it down below as well so just duplicate these a couple of time instance them around until you get a nice fence type of look now don't worry that this looks a bit repetitive but we'll be fixing it in a minute by layering some other assets as well now you know at this point the more time you spend at adding nice assets you know making your own obviously in these videos I'm not showing you how to make your own tree since that will take a very very long time if I am going to show you some uh, tree making it will probably have its own dedicated video since as you would have noticed in all of my videos I make full-on projects from scratch which you know makes it very necessary for me to provide you with public uh, available assets that you can buy or download so you can follow along in the future I will be doing some more specific videos as you could see the more bushes you add the more details you add and at this point you get to have a lot of fun in terms of assets you could use botanic you could use max tree which is what I use when doing commercial project you could add you could use a 3d shaker as well which seems to me to be the best blender asset right now at this point let's talk about adding some shadows to our scene and improving the foreground a tad bit just add any tree you know just make sure that there is enough space between the uh, between the leaves so you get to have a bit of dappling light so make sure that the tree is not too dense so you don't have any light passing through for the color management make sure to be using AGX as well AGX is really amazing the more I use it the more I like it at this time let's add a plane which will play the role of our backdrop which will scatter some trees on so as you can see I am adding just a couple of tree variations from the botanic add-on you know this is slightly a bit too sloppy right but you get to spend more time doing this it probably took me like 40 or 30 minutes to make this whole scene 24 minutes exactly so as you could see using the geo scatter add-on in the density scatter option go ahead and play with the random scale go ahead and play also with the rotation as well which is really crucial you don't really want all of your variations to look practically the same and as you can see the nice thing about this system based on distribution and not by number that it updates once you change the scale of your mesh now in the future I will be showing you how to scatter everything for free but in these videos I'm just trying to provide a relatively fast overview of a regular workflow now as you can see we already have a pretty okay image it lacks a bit in terms of realism but we will try to fix this in a bit now let's add a let's duplicate a tree that we have using all d and just try to frame our scene a bit better while thinking about composition now as always the scene looks a bit too empty which is why i'm adding some assets to just all around improve the look slightly now you could go ahead and add some human models you know you could go ahead and add like a dog you can go ahead and add a kid playing you could go ahead and add some type of bench that people can sit in a outdoor sitting area you know that can be a really good idea but in this purpose I am just capturing some plants So at this point let's play around with the look of our scene and with the lighting as well 
as you can see, just play around with the strength input looks more or less correct. Play around with the ozone. The more ozone you have, the more bluish tint you will have. Now let's go ahead and just improve the look of the sky. So let's duplicate our sky and add a mix shader. Add a, a light path and choose in camera ray as the factor and plug the sky texture into the other slot. Now for this one, we want to see this one and we want it to be more bluish and saturated, which is why we're going to up the ozone and add a hue saturation and up the saturation by a fair bit. Feel free to also play with the hue as well, which can give us a nice look. Now use reference from this. You know, we don't want to push this a bit too far unless you know what we're doing. And just all around, try to polish the lighting of the scene while making use of the shadows casted by the trees that we added here. Now this image has little color correction, so what I would recommend is you to go ahead and improve the scene inside of Photoshop. And as you can see in front of me, I am adding a plane which will play the role of a light blocker. Light blockers are, are really powerful, they are used in cinema all the time and used in actual product photography. It's a bit hard to do it for entire scenes, but you know, and we get to have this privilege. And as you can see, I'm just blocking some light out of places I don't want to see light in. At this point, how can we improve the scene? We can improve it by spending obviously more time. I have spent around 24 minutes making this. Using better quality assets, right? I have only botanic add-on as some biomes. And if I had access to, let's say, Blender versions of Max 3, I would have used that. You know, and you could go ahead and use some Quixel assets and just all around add some more interesting details while maybe adding some human 3D scans, etc. So hopefully you learned a thing or two. This is really simple as always, you know, very general video just to kind of give you an overview of the general process. And feel free to subscribe if you like the video, maybe follow me on Instagram. And if you have any question, feel free to drop it down below or join our Discord where we can have some conversations about everything. Until next time, take care and enjoy yourself.